Dr. Mono, I'm really confused on this problem from the destroyer on Ain and Means. I just, I want to blow my brains out. Do you Come on over, me? we don't want you to blow your brains out. And let's take a look. I get a lot of questions on this and I want to make a videotape for you guys on a group of chemicals that gets absolutely no love. And that is called an Ain Amine. What you do when you have an aldehyde or a ketone with a secondary amine, you form a compound called an enamine. What I'm going to do here is you have an O and you have an H. And what I'm going to do is to take off the alpha proton. So if you took off water, we're going to split the water off and we're going to put where the double bond was. I move the double bond over and I simply attach on the nitrogen and I form what's called an enamine. Now, let me run through this. Um, I don't really have any textbook that really runs through the whole thing and holds your hand. So let me just show you how it happens. For the data exam, I think you're in good shape if you can predict an enamine. But let's go through all the steps to make sure you understand it. How could I transform this into this? My first step is I'm going to protonate the carbonyl as usual. In the second step, the secondary amine acts as a nucleophile and does a nucleophile addition. And as you can see, that would give me this. And then the water would simply pull off the H. And now we have everything neutral. The next step, I set up my leaving group. I protonate the O. And there's my OH. Now watch. The water leaves. The double bond forms. And now I form this aminium ion. Now... Watch what happens. In the next step, we're going to do an elimination. And the adjacent, it could have been either one. I pull off the H. This bond moves in. And this bond moves out. And you form the enamine. Now, this is where the confusion comes up in Destroyer. I also ask you to do something with an enamine. The enamine is also a nucleophile. Is it the greatest nucleophile in the world? No, but it's a decent nucleophile. So come over to here. I wrote for you what would happen, and I'll show you how an enamine could function as a nucleophile. Here we go. In the very first step, the electrons move down, and I do a simple SN2, and I capture the alkyl group. I hope that step is clear. I explained this so many times that I'm really hoping now that students will look at this and say, oh my God, I see it. In the next step, a water molecule will come in and attack this carbon to give you this structure here. Water comes in, deprotonates it, and now I'm here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I protonate the nitrogen. If I protonate the nitrogen, I'm here. The nitrogen group is the leaving group. This bond folds down. I hope you can see that. There's the leaving group. And then finally, the last step, a water molecule comes in, deprotonates it, and we form 2-ethyl cyclohexanone. So as you can see, what I've done is I alkylated a, a ketone. In this case, it was cyclohexanone. I alkylated it as shown earlier, and I transformed it into an enamine. I then used that enamine, and what I did was I added an ethyl group, and I was able to alkylate my ketone. There's many other reactions that are similar to this. A very similar reaction is if I do what's called a stork enamine synthesis. The stork reaction is done in an analogous way. But if you can understand this, you're in good shape to understand the chemistry of the enamines. All right, I hope this helps and clears up something that even the best of students are a little confused on. All right, I'll end this clip now. If you got any questions, hit me up on the study group on Facebook. Bye-bye.